The local tourist board like to point out to visitors that the Lincolnshire Wolds are the highest land in eastern England, between Yorkshire and Kent. But millions of years ago it lay beneath a tropical sea and later was covered by ice. The Lincolnshire Wolds, situated between the Humber and the Wash, south of Grimsby, and not far from the North Sea, was designated an area of outstanding natural beauty in 1973. It covers 216 square miles of rolling chalk hills, bordered by several small towns that include Louth, where I had an enjoyable stay for a couple of nights. I went in March, shortly before the pandemic struck, finding Louth then a vibrant and lively town. Its chief architectural glory is St. James's Church in Westgate, which should not be missed and is on the walk. Just short of 300 feet, it has the tallest parish church spire. Pop inside, its east window is particularly impressive. The walk will be found on Ordnance Survey Explorer Map number 282, but I was guided by a Lincolnshire World's Countryside Service leaflet, Vales and Views, which describes a circular walk of seven and a half miles from the town centre that ventured into the Wolds. This is not a lakes or dales landscape. It is very open, and the photographer has to respond to its subtle changes, and they don't always show their secrets immediately. It is a photographic landscape for the connoisseur, and those prepared to look beyond the obvious. An early highlight are the wooden leaf sculptures in Westgate Fields and the Valley Hubbard's Hills. Unfortunately, there had been much rain, so I framed the pictures carefully to avoid the considerable amount of mud that had accumulated. The river must have burst its banks recently. Beyond the ring road, the compositional demands that a world's landscape require soon became apparent. Suddenly, foreground interest was important, and the hyperfocal distance for overall sharpness of the image. Thankfully, the tall spire of St. James's Church acted as a focal point, but it needed a bit more. This was provided by a friendly farmer who, in the course of activities, had added his own artistic touch to the landscape. Talking of a friendly farmer, this section of the walk at Jack's Furs is not a public right-of-way. Instead, it is a permissive footpath, kindly granted by the landowner. You certainly get some wonderful wide-ranging views of the worlds back to Louth from this high vantage point. Soon we drop down to Welton Vale, and a track that once was the main entrance to South Elkington Hall. A remnant of that period is a whalebone arc, a reminder of the Grimsby fishing industry that influenced the area. The extensive woodland is ideal material for controlling high dynamic range. Now I tend to spot meter highlights and then correct shadows in post-production if necessary.
the hall was demolished in the 1960s, and from old photographs it looked a grand affair. The village remains, and so does All Saints Church, a Grade II listed building. Its highly decorated chancel ceiling is based on the Te Deum, and the organ has been restored. The weather was now closing in, so I quickly returned to Louth via Heron Lake, created in 1842 and restored in 2016. It was originally part of the South Elkington Hall Parkland, but is now in the care of Elkington Angling. Back at Louth, I was just in time to catch the sunset behind St. James's Church, before returning to my hotel.